on the uh, easy 302 project today and I'm in the house garage now instead of my other garage uh, because the, it's freezing cold outside and there's tons of snow so uh, I figured I need to get back to this and get on the project and get it finished up though so this is like the third installment of the video and then you can see here I got the engine pretty much assembled and here's what ended up happening since no one has built a roller cam one piece remain seal uh, 302 Chevrolet. Um, the problem I ran into was I used the the, e, the original DZ 302 pistons in the late model block with the Vortex cylinder head. Now the chamber, which I'll put some pictures up of the of the chambers here, the chamber appears to be it is a different shape, uh, and that's for to eliminate detonation. You could run higher compression. Uh, the Vortec head was essentially just like a, a in between from the rig, from the original style Chevrolet small block head and the LT1 from say uh, 92 uh, up to like 97. That cylinder head um, merged with an original small block Chevrolet is what you got your Vortec from. So here we are. I got it assembled and I ran into a problem. The problem being when I put the heads on. I initially was installing my valve springs, or not my valve springs, my rocker arms, I'm sorry. And I thought I ran into a piston to valve clearance issue, but it wasn't a piston to valve clearance issue. It was the pistons actually hitting the chamber on the head. So um, I thought, you know, rocker arms being installed, I had a piston to valve clearance issue. I couldn't turn the engine more than like, say, an eighth of a turn. And I realized it was actually contacting the chamber versus contacting the valve. And I mean, I hadn't cranked it over or anything, so everything's fine. It's just we have interference issues with uh, the piston and the chamber. So I'm going to have to pull all of this stuff back off, tear it down to the short block, and then clearance the pistons for the chamber. We're going to have to make uh, a mold of the chamber, and then we're going to try to transfer that over to the piston and on uh, the face of the piston, the top of the piston, and give it 39 thousandths clearance at a minimum. Uh, I'm probably just going to shoot for 40 because it's so much easier to determine, um, you know, 40,000 is literally the thickness of your head gasket generally. So uh, we'll get this torn down and I hate to take it back apart, but it's something that needs to happen. Otherwise it will never run. So uh, hang out. We'll make a montage of me ripping it apart and then we uh, start making a decision what to do from that point forward. <laughs>
now that I've got the heads off, you can see these are the original uh, style DZ302 pistons. It's a forge replacement. There's your part number. Um, so if you need to order some, there you go. But this is an original replacement DZ302 piston. Uh, it's forged and it's meant for five, seven inch rods. That's why I use the five, seven rods out of this uh, roller 350, the one piece remain still 350. And I just put ARP bolts in it. It was real simple and uh, just worked with the whole combo. For those of you that were saying I should use the original rods that came out of the 4.3 Baby LT1, that would work if I wanted to use an off-the-shelf 350 piston, and I probably could do that with like an uh, LT1 style piston, but the compression ratio on it, it's got a lot, lot less, uh, this is an 18 uh, cc dome, which provides about uh, 11 and a half to 12 to one, depending on how much you milled the head, uh, thickness of the head gasket, and then how far the piston sits in the hole. Um, but if I use the LT1 piston, it's only, I think, 8cc. And 8cc only provides me like 9.5 to 1 compression. I, I wanted something that was comparable to the DZ302. Um, and that's why I wanted the compression to be very similar to what it would have been. So uh, that's where we're at. Okay. So I don't, and it literally, this L99 crank, yes, I know everybody, there's been a lot of confusion about stroke on the crank. Um, the L99 V8, which came out in 1994 and is not a 267, it's not a 262. It is a 263 cubic inch 4.3 liter baby LT1. And it has a three inch stroke. So this would be a three inch stroke by a four inch bore. And in this case, it's 4060 bore because this is what the the pistons that I got now, uh, and to answer some of the questions, I guess, why 60 over pistons? This is something that nobody else has done. I looked on the internet everywhere I could find, right? And nobody had built a, a mock DZ302 using a later model block with a cast crank and uh, DZ302 pistons. And so I didn't want to bet the farm. So I went with the cheapest route possible that I could possibly get and that's a set of, set of used Vortec heads, a set of pistons I scored off of eBay for 400 bucks. They usually go for $600. The only downside was I ended up having to bore the block 60 over, which probably would have probably made it easier if I would have just used another set of pistons. But in this case, I got, I ended up with forged pistons. So uh, not a bad deal, but uh, so that's what it is. It's like this, I'm trying to do this as cheap as possible to see if it's even gonna work. And that's why I don't have any issues with hacking something up. But if you look on the bottom of the piston here, you can see where it's contacting the chamber right there. Okay, that's my problem. That's my extra area I need to remove. Okay, and I'm sure there's gonna be a few more, um, probably here, okay? Or maybe a little bit further out. But we'll open that area up just a little bit. We'll pull a couple cc's out of that piston. But see, you gotta remember, if I'm pulling the CCs out of the piston so that it clears, that means that area is in the cylinder head now. So the compression is going to be relatively close. Um, I think if if it's just a little bit of area I got to open up, I don't think I'm going to have to rebalance anything because I'm going to have to do it to all eight pistons. And you're talking like just a little bit I'm removing out of there. So we'll see how it works out. But this is going to be, uh, it's a pain in the butt with it completely assembled. And I wish I would have known this from the get go but it wasn't something that I really even considered. So to get an idea of what the top of our piston should look like, uh, you know, this chamber is essentially what it needs to somewhat look like, only the inverse of it, right? So um, the easiest way to do that, bang, Play-Doh, right? We're gonna use some Play-Doh. We'll figure out what the chamber is supposed to look like, how much needs to be taken off the piston. We'll have a good idea of like where, in what area do we need to take as much off the piston as possible. So I'm gonna mix these three together uh, these three colors and I do this quite often um, just because it's the simplest and easiest way to do it, it doesn't cost jack craps three dollars and 75 cents for five of these so uh, it's the easiest way to measure something like this and if you need to know what something needs to look like so give me a few minutes we'll mix it together we'll cram it in the chamber and then we'll have an idea what it needs to look like so to get the party started, I just took the red and the white and mixed them together. And that way I have a consistent color is really what I, I wanted to work until I had a consistent color. Uh, this pink color is gonna work just fine. I don't even need to use the blue one. I think I have enough here. 
uh, just to establish whatever shape I'm trying to do. Now, this cylinder head is a 64cc chamber head, um, just like the original uh, double hump, but um, it, the chamber obviously has metal in some spots and not there in others. So uh, we're gonna go ahead and measure this up, or not measure it, but just make ourselves a shape so we know what the top of our piston should look like and what's actually contacting and where and why. So here we go, let's peel her off and see what it looks like. I mean, it's not gonna be exact, of course, cause this stuff's gonna move around some, but it gives you an idea of what it should look like, right? Now this here doesn't necessarily need to be there. It looks like it's part of um, what I shoved it into the spark plug hole. So let's just go ahead and peel that dude off. All right. And there we go. That's what we're kind of looking at there. All right, so come on, let's go check out the top of the piston. We'll uh, place them side by side so you can see what's going on here. You see how large and pronounced the spark plug area is right there compared to this cutout over here. This one's much more large and pronounced and I think I need to do this again so that I can get a full idea of how big this is in comparison to, and you can see it's distorting because it's not, it's warm, so it has no real strength. It's just kind of floppy. The best thing to do is, if you wanted something that's exactly the same and it looks and retains the shape, is you shove this in there and then throw the whole thing in the freezer. Don't even take it out of the cylinder head or anything. Just throw it in the freezer for about 30 minutes, pull it out, you can pull this off, but you want to use like a mold releasing agent. It helps it pull off without distorting it. And then sometimes you can do measurements on it. If you want to be within like say, you know, five thousandths or so, it works fine, but in this case, we can see right here, side by side comparison wise, we're going to want to remove some more material around here. This is definitely not pronounced. And now that, or it is not as, this is more pronounced than the Vortec head. That indicator right there is where this is in what they call a witness mark where it's rubbing. Okay, so that witness mark there is what gives it, uh, gives you an indication that that's where it's rubbing at. So we need to open that chamber up more here uh, so that we clear most of the stuff. So that looks like that's probably gonna be our biggest culprit out of this whole deal is the shape of this right here and the spark plug hole, which is obvious if you put the two pictures side by side of the old school chamber to the new school chamber, you see that the spark plug hole is completely different design. All right, well, that's what we got for today.